Greetings fellow sailors, uh, admirals and captains um, and welcome to the channel. Uh, my name is uh, Carrier Junior and uh, this is a brand new channel and uh, this is Victory at Sea Pacific. It's the first game that uh, I'm adding to the channel and uh, what uh, in this video uh, what I will be doing is uh, just introducing myself uh, for a few minutes introducing the channel and then going over the game uh, at a high level and then basically um, starting a the tutorial in a in a episode one of a playthrough uh, where we'll just go through the campaign and uh, and basically uh, try to to learn as we go together and see if uh, what the game is all about so uh, regarding myself uh, I'm just a person uh, that uh, has, I've been interested in naval combat games, um, and, uh, and I have a an interest in like naval naval warfare, uh, World War II naval historical warfare, uh, and uh, basically um, I've been playing these what I consider this would be a niche uh, niche uh, industry or niche. Uh, uh, area, I guess, of the market, uh, because you don't see a lot of uh, naval combat games out there. Uh, there's, uh, but they've been gaining in popularity in the recent years. Uh, but there's some games that uh, are just not as popular as the mainstream AAA uh, first-person shooters and all those games that everybody knows about. So, essentially, I created the channel to basically share uh, what I think is a great game here and uh, to provide feedback to the developers and uh, with your help and uh, try to grow the community and you know get some awareness on this game this game and other games like it uh, mainly over the last uh, you know, year or two I've been uh, playing almost exclusively World of Warships which is another naval combat game where 12 persons, uh, I mean 12 players uh, versus another 12 players um, and it's uh, 20 minute games and you face each other in various maps and in various classes of uh, surface ships um, and uh, yeah and I will be featuring that game on here as well um, the other game that I have kind of dabbled in is uh, Navy Field 2 and Navy Field 1 uh, I did get into those games a bit later. Um, I mean, Navy Field 1 is like 16 years old. It's an old game, but the mechanics are superb, and um, unfortunately, it's not as popular, so I'm gonna still try to play that game and <coughs> basically uh, try to support it as well. So, um, regarding my name, Junior is a uh, Imperial Japanese Navy uh, auxiliary carrier from World War II. Um, I think it carried somewhere around 40 to 50 planes, um, so not as big as uh, some of the fleet carriers. And uh, I was in a clan in World of Warships where everybody had to choose a name uh, based on a ship, and that's what was uh, one of the few available names, so that's what I went with, and I love carriers, so as you will find out <coughs> as you get to know me. So having said that, uh, so yeah, we're on this with this video. I'm going to be introducing Victory at Sea Pacific, which is the sequel to Victory at Sea. Uh, it is a game uh, developed by Evil Twin Brothers. Uh, there seem to be a, a small uh, game developer. Um, <coughs> I haven't played the first Victory at Sea uh, because, based on what I saw, it, I wasn't impressed with the graphics and the mechanics. From what I saw on YouTube, but when I first saw Victory at Sea Pacific, um, people like the devs playing it, I fell immediately in love with it, and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. And it came out on September 14th, so it's a brand new game. Uh, some do say that it has been released a little prematurely, as there is a lot of bugs in it, which is true. Uh, but or there's already been a patch, uh, I think 104, 104. Uh, actually 105 right here we can see that uh, we're on the patch 105 so already we've had two patches on this game so that's a good good news and um, shows the developers are looking into it so <coughs> without further ado I'm 
just going to give you a brief overview. So Victory at Sea Pacific is basically a naval combat strategies and RTS uh, game uh, based in the Pacific theater of war uh, during World War II. Uh, and essentially you have the entire Pacific as your uh, theater and you command a fleet, various fleets of ships and you have the ability to engage in 3D uh, tactical uh, warfare as well as have an overview of the map from a high level uh, and have mo and carry out more strategic decisions such as uh, shipbuilding and resources and all these other things which we're going to get to right away here. So without further ado, um, as you can see from the game menu here, uh, there's only a campaign option, there's no multiplayer, and there's no skirmish, which uh, <coughs> is perfectly fine for, as the main main part of the game here is just the campaign and what you can do with it. And I'm sure that uh, if uh, the developers get good community response and good support, um, and things go well with the campaign, they will uh, look into, I'm sure, going into skirmish modes, uh, developing a skirmish mode and multiplayer uh, in the future, which is things that I would be very excited about. But I'm totally fine with the campaign at this stage. So let's uh, let's click on campaign. We have here uh, easy, medium, and hard. I'm going to go with medium. And uh, <coughs> we've got the American campaign, Japanese, and the British as all three, three were involved in the Pacific Theater. Uh, the Japanese and the British are locked, and from what I understand, it's because they have not been developed yet. Uh, so the devs focused on the American campaign first. And as, uh, as I presume that a lot of work went into each of these campaigns, so they wanted to get this out, which I totally understand, and I'm actually personally very happy. Yeah, even if the game has a few bugs, I'm sure they can get a result, and it's good to be able to play it. Uh, so I, so probably in the upcoming near future we're going to re release the Japanese and British and you'll be able to play as those. So let's go ahead and click on the American campaign here. And do you wish to skip the tutorial? And we're going to so we're going to say no because I want to show you I've done the tutorial and I played this game for some uh, for a few hours just to get the basic mechanics. Um, but I'll go, I'm going to go through the tutorial with you guys. So complete the training as a new, new objective training exercise. So, good morning Admiral, we have a destroyer fully crewed and loaded. Let's get this training exercise underway. Um, so just a disclaimer before um, I get going with this. Um, I am, as I said, new to the game and I have only played a few hours. I've mastered, the. I, I've, I can say I, I'm comfortable with the basic mechanics. Uh, to be able to, you know, show you guys enjoyable content, uh, but there's going to be a lot of things that I don't know the answers to, and there's going to be a lot of guessing and trying things out, trial and error, and um, I want to ask you guys to forgive me for that ahead of time, and hopefully those will be things that um, will show uh, as we'll learn together, and uh, we'll go from there. So let's get this started. So as you can see, it says look around, hold the middle mouse button and move the... Okay, so you click on the middle mouse button and you can see that you can rotate the camera. And there's our USS Litchfield. And then use the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. So here we're zooming in and zooming out. Which is fine. Perfect. Now, use WASD to move the camera and hold shift, left shift to move faster. So let's go left right, W, S, and then with the shift you can do that faster. Perfect. Left click on the ship and press space. Okay, so I'm clicking on the ship. It centers it and then space. To give the USS Litchfield a move order, right click on a point on the sea. Okay, right click and then you click this guy and the destroyer moves. Perfect. No, what else? To turn right click on the C and select the turn command. Okay. Turn this way. The ship will keep going in that direction until it is otherwise commanded. Alright, 
Perfect. Use the speed sign to slow the ship to a halt. Alright, let's do that. Get this right over here. <coughs> Alright. Is it stopping? Five knots, three knots, zero knots. Oh, it's going backwards. Zero knots. Perfect. Select one of the destroyer's guns. So we're gonna select the uh, that gun over there. When the target is within the green firing arc, left click on the target to fire. Perfect. Let's do that. And there is our guns firing. Direct hit, sir. Perfect. Alright. Time to deal with final blow. Select one of the torpedo tubes. So. I always forget, so the starboard, I think this is starboard, because left is a four letter word, port is a four letter word, so yeah, so that's starboard. Um, so use the bracket keys to narrow the spread, and click, and we should see these torpedoes doing their thing. So we got uh, three torpedoes being fired. Toward this uh, poor, helpless SS Burt McDowell cargo ship. By the way, you're gonna see these uh, coming up. These are their bread and butter as far as supplies. Um, if they get attacked, your ports will run out of supplies, which means that your fleets will not be able to supply and they will be useless. So, these ships are important to defend and to keep producing so that your supply lines are stable and reliable. So as you can see the graphics are pretty good. You can see all these animations. Pretty decent. Get all this water effect. Target is confirmed destroyed, so it's starting to sink. Well, as you can see, they can probably do some uh, better job with like lighting there or texturing or all right we when ready press this game okay so what these are these are like uh, logs if you press the log button uh, it tells you like basically give you uh, battle summaries so we have had reports that Japanese assault on Pearl Harbor the attack commenced at such time a Y in time it is believed the port was attacked by over 300 Japanese aircraft in two waves, consisting of fighters, dive bombers, and torpedo bombers. Eight battleships have been damaged, four of which have been sunk. Three cruisers, three destroyers were also damaged. In total, 188 U.S. aircraft were destroyed and 2,403 Americans were killed. And 1,178 others were wounded. Important installations such as power stations, dry docks, and a shipyard and fuel and torpedo storage facilities were not attacked. Enemy losses, 29 aircraft and 5 midget submarines. Yeah, they were not very successful in the Pearl Harbor attack. When ready, press escape and leave the login screen. So, essentially the game starts you right after the Pearl Harbor. So we are in December 7, 1941, 0600 hours. And so let's press escape and we get war bonds. You might ask what are those? War bonds are essentially uh, your currency in the game that you gain, gain when you uh, destroy enemy uh, ships and when you capture enemy ports. The more imports generate war bonds over a period of time, like on a consistent basis, the more ports that you hold and uh, the more bonds you're going to have. And then you can spend those war bonds on all sorts of things such as new ships, building new ships, or upgrading ships, or upgrading ports. Defend against the remaining hostiles. So, that's what we're gonna do. We've been attacked by the Emperor of Japan. Alright. So, we've got our destroyer. The Enterprise reports it is in the vicinity. We should help defend it, in case there are more hostile presence. Order the Lichfield to move close to the aircraft carrier. Okay. So, Select it by clicking on it. Let's get a better camera angle here. And then let's click the move command. Full speed, 12 knots. Okay. You may speed up time to reach destination quicker. So, this is a big part of this game. So, with this, you can speed it up up to 25 times in the game itself, like in this view, and up to 1000 times on the 
overall strategic map. Now, it's a double-edged sword because what k tends to happen is what I've seen uh, people do is they speed up without actually preparing properly and things just happen so fast that all of a sudden they find themselves uh, surrounded by enemies or you know losing all sorts of ships and fleets so for whatever reason so you have to be careful um, and as you play the game you'll get into a I guess a um, a flow where you know when to uh, speed it up and when you when not to. So let's click this, and uh, you can use the plus and minus keys on the keyboard. So now we see we're at 25 times. Continue to the enterprise. So that's what we're doing, and here we are. Right click on the C near the aircraft carrier and order the Lich field to move close to it. Okay, let's do that. Oh, we're still super, super, super fast. Let's go back to one times. All right, the squadrons are listed here. The fleet, something. Click and drag the status bar to do what? Oh, we want to join them. This has combined the two squadrons in one. Click on the squadrons header. So let's stop time for a second. Which is another thing you can do. Right here you can see in the top right is a time at zero, zero, which is essentially like pausing the game. This is the only way you can really pause the game. Um, or you can crawl, uh, slow it to a crawl. So what we have here in the top left, we have your um, task force and the task for each task force is designed into squadrons. And each squadron has a set of ships underneath and you can create new squadrons or move ships from one squadron to the other. This is combined the two squadrons. Click on the squadron header. So let's speed this back up by pressing the plus to plus one. Okay, now we got the squadron. Right click on the C to order the squadron to move. All right, so let's tell it to move in this direction. Ships is going to move in formation. They are currently in circle formation, which is the preferred formation for protecting carriers. Clicking on the status bar of a ship selects that ship. Double clicking focuses on the ship. Select the Enterprise. Okay, so we just double click on the Enterprise and it focuses on it. Glorious Enterprise, most decorated ship in World War II. We'll see the scout. To, oh, we'll need to scout the area. Okay, select the bomber flight. So these are all the flights. In uh, these are all the aircraft that you can select. So let's do that. Douglas SPD Dauntless dive bomber. Let's click one. And what do you want me to do with it? Right click on a point where you send the flight. Okay. So let's right click there and let's let's see this thing. So you see here, dive bomber should be taking off once the aircraft moves into the wind. Because in aviation, uh, aircraft uh, always try to uh, always take off into the in, and land into the wind. It's uh, allows the lowest ground speed and uh, makes the landings and takeoff shorter and safer. So let's speed this up for a second. Let this enterprise turn. And there we go. There's our dive bomber taking off. Let's double click on it. Or So each flight has three aircraft. They this is one of the nice things here. You can see that each one has taken off separately and then they join up in a flight. Select the launch select the launch bomber flight. Okay, let's do that. So if you double click it zooms into them. And here's our bomber flight. They have been com confused orders about the enemy sightings. Order the flight to move to this location. Oh, let's move into that location. Speed up time. Okay, I don't want to speed up time as I like to explain things as we go. So these are your starting dive bombers. They were like the backbone of the U.S. Navy for a while there. Um, they are much superior to the TBF, uh, the uh, Devastator torpedo bombers, which were old, antiquated, and most of them got lost in the war because without you know, the torpedoes weren't functioning properly and everything. Uh, one thing you can do with 
uh, planes is you can change their altitude so I changed it to just 400 meters right now so you can see the planes are going lower and here's our flight that's flight of planes going towards the 400 meters so let's keep going in this direction <coughs> Scout it. <coughs> so we are here. Japanese destroyer sighted. There we go. So let's go and then look at how the mechanics of attacking a surface ship with dive bombers works. Right click on any machine and choose attack. So let's right click and attack. Uh, typically, dive bombers will fly a lot are designed to approach at high altitude before diving so let's kind of do that uh, that's a little high, let's do like 1200 meters so that they can gain some altitude and do their drop it's a Hamakaze, it's a Japanese destroyer and uh, we're gonna be dive bombing them with Flight of three dive bombers. And there it is. Boom. No more Japanese destroyer. Now, we're picking up some sonar. So let's go back to the destroyer. And we've picked up a submarine. So what we're gonna do is take the uh, field, which should be going towards the, uh, where is it? Okay, now it's going towards it. Only ships with depth charges can damage submerged enemies. So a destroyer has depth charges, some cruisers do as well, they're right here in the back. So we will be going near or over the submarine and launching our depth charges. You can see here in the back we have two of them. Slow loading times to reload. So it says depth charges two times. So I'm pretty sure this means we only have two of them. Or we can reload two at a time. Yeah, I think that's what it means. We probably have, yeah, we have 15 depth charges. So we're gonna move towards, so this blue circle is the sonar that is seeking out the submarine. Uh, as I said, anything with a depth charge will probably have a sonar, <coughs> whereas other ships basically will not be able to detect submarines. So you better have destroyers or uh, cruisers with uh, sonar and depth charges, or have um, anti-submarine warfare uh, planes to be able to do that. So let's speed this up. We're getting closer and closer. So now we're gonna tell it to attack. Since it has been given separate order, the USS Shield has left the formation, as you can see from this icon right here. And if you press it, it will rejoin the formation. Uh, Eliminate the enemy submersible. Okay, so let's speed this up a little bit. Getting closer, closer. And... <coughs> so as you can see, the submarine is just below the surface. Right here. It's just sitting there. Probably because it's a training exercise and not firing back. But typically, if you come in this angle, you are asking for trouble because they have aft and front torpedo launchers and doing this is kind of like suicide because unless he's already shot uh, it takes a little time to reload and then you can do that so again attack it, it should <coughs> you can manually launch the depth charges or you can tell to attack and it will basically drive over get as close as possible Launch the depth charges, and there is a dead Japanese 
submarine. Now, looks like uh, that was the last time click rejoin button. So you click on this button right here, and it will basically go rejoin. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. United States of America me, uh, was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. Okay, that voice was a little loud. Sorry for that, guys. Uh, that was... Uh, famous speech that we know about all right so now what I think that's it press M or click the minimap to view the bridge screen so let's press M and this ladies and gentlemen is the bridge map or what they call the bridge map is the strategic overview of the whole Pacific theater as it says right here. So you can do the same, zoom in, and then WSD to move in the map. All your fleets are listed here, displaying their current order, average morale, and location. So right now we have three task forces. Three, eight, and twelve are under your command. Select task force twelve. Let's do that. Choose a flight of aircraft and send scouting. Where is task force twelve? As for 12, is somewhere in Hawaii, obviously. Okay, let's choose uh, these wildcats. The range of this flight is marked on the map. Right click on the map within this range. So, oh, no, sorry, never mind. <laughs> what am I talking about? Here's Task Force 12. So, essentially, that is the range that beyond which you will basically not be able to return to, the planes will not be able to return to the carrier. Order flight to move. Okay, let's do that. So there's a flight of wildcats taking off. The flight will make its way to that position and scout it out. An enemy force has been spotted and is now visible on the map. So let's go look at that. Here's Johnston Island. We got two destroyers and white light cruisers. Select Task Force 3, right click on the J Japanese fleet. Task Force 3 has three destroyers and one cruiser. Against two destroyers and one light cruiser. So, yeah, one more destroyer. So, let's tell to attack. You may speed up up to a thousand times. Yep, we know that. Click here. Yeah, if. Ooh, 200, 100. Okay. So, you can see that 100 times. And there's our scouting uh, aircraft. So we're getting closer to this. Uh okay, Task Force 3 has engaged the enemy near Johnston Island. These alerts come up exactly because here we're at 100 times speed, right? And then I think it resets to 1 when you get out of it. But in order for you to avoid essentially doing a whole bunch of stupid things really quickly, the game gives you a lot of alerts telling you, hey, your like days and weeks and months are going by and all of this stuff is happening and it's good so this you can either ignore it and have the AI automatically uh, beat the enemy fleet or you can enter combat which takes it a 3d view and uh, basically take command yourself so the beauty of this game is it allows you to do almost everything automatically and you can play the whole thing from this you know, bridge view or you can go into the tactical uh, battle map or view and even there you can just watch things as people, you know, your forces do things automatically or you can go and manually do everything yourself. So let's enter combat and see <coughs> what we got here. So, before the battle begins, you may quickly set your ship squadron into formations. Yeah, we've got, what is that, Able Squadron. We've got Indianapolis the and the uh, 3DDs. 
now you can click I think it's right here on this uh, you can rotate what we got and uh, so let's change the formation line formation column formation yeah essentially you will find out that in this game what I found out so far is whoever outranges the other ship wins simple as that so we ha obviously uh, we get the Indianapolis which I think might be yeah it's just a regular cruiser but it will out um, actually you know what let's just go and do um, line formation and then let's get them as close as possible right here and press OK here we are with our DD long south south hard Indianapolis and where's our other DDs right here the Hopkins and we have an enemy fleet over here it says fleet until you can scout it and then you'll see what's in the fleet but for now all you know here's you don't know what's the composition of it on the lower right you'll see what looks like a radar and um, you can see your friendlies in blue and your enemies in red and then the one thing that is might be uh, that is actually quite useful is if you press I think T it goes to this top down view and you can zoom in all the way to the ship level which looks pretty cool and that's uh, my line formation and the neat thing is this is more of a this allows you to get an idea of how far things are and where they are in respect to each other more so than the other view so as you can see here we have the Yurukaze, the Tanikaze those have uh, gotten into range and um, so let's select the uh, let's just select the Indianapolis here actually I'm going to select the task force and did I select it? ok so Hopkins squadron, there we go select the whole squadron and tell it to come just about here then I'm gonna go with Indianapolis and I'm gonna tell it to attack this guy and then we're gonna speed up by pressing plus and you can see that uh, our two fleets are steaming towards each other and the Indianapolis being a cruiser okay let's uh, slow it down right down to plus one so we got the Tenryu which is the light cruiser I believe and then the two destroyers behind it so essentially the cruiser alone can defeat that whole force because it will outrange both of these so they have basically no chance and the Tenryu is just a smaller cruiser so you really don't even need these guys and um, in fact So let's click on Indianapolis, press T again to go into this view. Actually, let's press Indianapolis again, and I think it censors it on the Indianapolis. So here we are cruising at 40 knots. Super fast ship. If you can look in the bottom left here, towards this Tenryu, which we're going to remind it to attack again. <coughs> and the Indianapolis has uh, basically nine eight inch guns oh, and there it goes firing so now that we are in range we're gonna slow the Indianapolis down considerably because we wanna keep that range advantage there it goes so you see now we are doing 10 knots and uh, as I was saying I have nine all of each of these turrets has three guns uh, eight inch guns on it we have three of them so nine in total and then we have four of these five inch guns on each side which have a range of eight miles versus a range of 16 miles and if you click on any of these guns you can see this green 
arc, which is their firing arc and their range. So you can see that Ethan Rear is not very happy because he's within the range and he's already at half health. And um, one of the bugs in this game is that ships like, stop firing sometimes. So here I'm manually shooting the main guns of the Indianapolis. So let's watch this as the shells come in. Boom. And you can see how much smaller this ship is. It's, this thing is almost like a destroyer. So now that we've done that, uh, we're going to tell the Indianapolis. Oh, where are we? To head on there at full speed now that this main threat is done. And we're going to chase these guys. Meanwhile, our destroyers are doing what they're doing. So they have specific orders. So essentially now what we can do is click on the whole squadron, tell them to move, and then I'll select Indianapolis, get that, see that front turret and see if we're in range. Press shift to get there faster. As I, you can see that green line is getting closer to these guys. So let's press plus a couple times and we are in range. So back to one time speed. Which one of these guys is gonna get it first? Let's go back to the Indy. And the Indy is not moving, which is great. Let's go at an angle here and let's attack. We're at uh, speed it up a little bit. Okay, and then so it looks like the Indy is firing a little bit of both. So let's just finish this guy off, would we? Oh, he was firing. Here comes the shells. You can see that the AI does some minor dodging here, um, but he's really slow. I don't know if that's because his engines are out. But this guy's just not going to last very long. And he has absolutely no chance because... Let's... come on Indy. Let's get this guy. I mean, Indy's doing 40 knots. And it's weird. Sometimes in this game, the shells completely miss. Like, like that case. <laughs> and sometimes they're like dead on. The other thing you'll notice is the ammo. We have 270 out of 300 rounds left. 270 and 279. You'll see the rare turrets usually get a, uh, don't fire as much because of the... if you're heading towards an enemy. Here comes the volley. And there it goes. Skill for that guy. And this essentially, right here, shows you the basic combat mechanic of the game. That if you have a bigger gun, it has more range, and you can have one ship be able to take on multiple smaller ships because they're just the AI doesn't rush into range. And even if they did, they would be taken out by it before they can even shoot. So you got your, you know, your light cruisers that have longer range than your destroyers and your each cruiser size that has a longer range. So we destroy the fleet and it tells you here. And uh, now it'll probably tell you to go back to the bridge. These guys are going to remain here and sh you'll see them on the map. Press escape. So when you press escape, it goes back to the bridge. And then click on the log. It'll say, in the morning of the Tuesday 9th of December 1941, Task Force 3, which is what we are, Task Force Spartan Enemy, and 
it tells you what the composition is and just gives you a little blob of what happened. I mean, these are cool, but every once after a while, they're after a while they're just not as realistic or accurate. So I stopped reading them. So let's go to the bridge. See now because we destroyed those ships, we got 50 war bonds, and now we have to conduct the submarine missions. So let's do Task Force Five. So if you look on the map, we were like here, Johnston, that's Hawaii, that's Midway. So now we're way into deep into enemy territory, next to Gilbert Islands, making an idol. And we got Task Force that's right next to it. So we select the Task Force, press escape, and it's going to take us into the, what I should call the battle view. At periscope death, the USS drum can see facilities. Press G. So. You press G, and then you can zoom in. Obviously, the uh, submarine is close enough to be able to see things. And uh, you got uh, this is how your typical bases look. You got six-inch coastal guns, so anything more than a six-inch, you can basically outrange all of these and destroy the entire thing without taking damage. We got uh, AA guns, batteries, and these are pretty powerful. Like if you send a flight of bombers, they will take out maybe even up to half of your squadron. Like they'll murder your squadrons, uh, from what I've seen. So dive bombing these things is just not the best, most efficient way of taking out these. And then essentially once you um, take over one of these, it becomes yours, but the more you destroy, the more you have to repair. And uh, I don't know if you can take on one without destroying all of it, I haven't gotten into that. But let's press G, we've scouted it. The gathering intelligence has been logged, press escape and look at the log screen. Okay, log. As of Tuesday, blah blah blah, reconnaissance of Macon Atoll has been successfully completed. The full report on Macon Atoll can be seen below. The military installation consists of eight anti-aircraft batteries, seven gun emplacements, six searchlights, one control tower, one barrack, one warehouse, one airfield, one hospital. It's considered a basic port. So you got basic ports, then you got minor ports, and then you have major ports. And what that means is the port has more defenses the bigger it is and typically has a larger airfield so you can house more aircraft uh, like a minor like a basic port can only have one aircraft and I think it, you can have then build shipyards uh, on the bigger ones let's go back to the bridge Japanese supply convoy is en route to Macon we should not allow the enemy to resupply okay so right click on the convoy and attack Speed this up. I thought I did. So Task Force 5. It's moving at 9 knots. Or can we go faster? Is maximum speed? Yeah, looks like 9 knots is what it is. So this is a one cargo ship and one oil tanker, which I think it's actually more than that. It just shows it as that. So now, allow USS Drum to reach the enemy supply convoy, which we did. And now what? Oh, enter combat. Okay. So we're within range. Command is submersible to surface. Okay. Progress this button here to surface, the one below it to go underwater and if you click it once more it will go to a deep dive and this kind of symbol shows you um, that it's right beneath the surface and when it's above it it will show that it's above it this is the aft torpedoes and you got four of them in the front you got six and then you've got a gun with 90 rounds so we're gonna go here and we're gonna attack 
the Liverpool Maru and the whatever that is, Yamamuzu Maru. <coughs> so again, we can go in a top-down view or we can just watch it from here, speed up time. So here's our submarine, which looks like this. Steaming on. I guess it's not steam powered, I should say, so moving on towards these guys, which sometimes they will have like one or two deck guns on it, and they can actually put a fight. So we're getting closer. I don't know which one is the closest one. Since these are relatively low, we have basically almost no defense, you can actually use your deck gun to shoot them down, or you could use your torpedo, but it'll be a bit of a waste. <coughs> you can see on the mini map here two red dots getting closer and your field of view so here we go he started start firing we're firing obviously not very accurate at very long distance so you can see this thing is not taking much damage this is how the cargo ships look like Look how small our submarine looks compared to that. But can we keep attacking? Sometimes you have to remind it. Ooh. So are you gonna attack? If I remember this one is actually a lot easier to kill. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna shoot this one down and torp that one this is a smaller vessel <coughs> here's our cone for our oh for our uh, torpedoes I'm not sure if it launches one or all six but anyways, um, let's go here, select torpedoes, okay let's turn first of all, we're gonna turn, we're gonna slow down, we're doing 23 knots which is crazy, so let's turn, we can select guns or we can select torpedoes, and we're gonna shoot. Oh my god, it shot all six torpedoes. I am not sure there was an option to just do one. Meanwhile, shooting at the other guy. So here's our torps. Obviously, a little overkill. And now we don't have. How many torps? Six. Now I don't know. Uh, let's attack this. Let's well, let's go here. What I don't know is like it shows six torps. So. Oh my god, that gun! My, why? Why even have it? Uh, let's go a little bit faster here. I don't know why this thing is turning where it's going. I don't want to attack it from the front. There's the other ship sinking to the bottom. Um, all right, so we're gonna select our front torpedoes again. Oh my God, this is a bad angle. But you know what? Let's slow right down. Let's uh, turn towards it. Oh my god, oh, so much for torping it. Anyways, oh, it's still alive. So what we're gonna do is do this. And since it's not moving very much, we're gonna narrow the torpedoes. And there goes our torps. All six of them. And as I said, it's 
seems to reload them, which is a little bit odd. Because that is insane. Well, here we have six torpedoes, a little, again, overkill, even at this angle, which is a horrible angle. You always want to go on the side with torpedoes. This guy will be extremely lucky. Yeah, exactly. So good job, Mr. Submarine. And yeah, you still have unlimited ammo apparently. And then 50 war bonds for that, and then conduct a raid mission. Okay. So let's do that. Press M to go to the map. And continue. Hong Kong, Manila. So these are all the things that Japan has conquered. So that's first five, we're just gonna chill there. So, move Tasker to the island. Okay, so what we're gonna do is take Tasker 17 and we're gonna Phoebus Assault, Recon, Defend. Okay, we're just gonna move the horses. So, what this does, so there's basically capturing islands up in in three stages, you recon it, then you raid it, and then you send an amphibious assault. Um, I think the recon is kind of optional. I don't. It's like up to you if you want to do that. And the raid softens their targets for your amphibious um, assault. So I sped up time here. Task Force 17 is the Yorktown and the Louisville and the Phelps. So we'll get a couple cruisers and a DD going with it. The ideal thing is that that heavy cruiser essentially is the best uh, thing because it can outrange the coastal guns on making making atoll and what and then you don't have to deal with like essentially the uh, AA defenses so we're just gonna get close here and I'm not gonna use the carrier for this because that's just not a good idea right now. Right, so we're getting closer and closer at 100 times speed. Press escape to return game view. All right, so we're close enough that we're gonna go into tactical view. Here's our Yorktown, which is the lead class. Lead ship over class, Yorktown class carrier. And it says begin, right click and choose attack. See, I did this, and what it happens is all your torpedoes, I mean, all your um, dive bomber squads, like it, like basically nuked. But we're gonna do that anyways, because just to show you. So the carrier is gonna basically. Uh, launch into the wind. Its escorts are gonna move with it, and to keep that circle formation. And as you can see, all the flights start taking off. Here on the left, you'll see Baker Squadron has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flights of dive bombers. Each one has three, so that's a 21 plane squadron. And this is pretty glorious. Pretty glorious. They can improve the animations a little bit as, you know, these planes are always there. But good enough for this stage. So there goes our dive bombers. Now, if I click on Baker Squadron, you will see that they're trying to essentially what happens is these so you have one two three four five six seven squadrons and they're trying to like group up but this guy is pretty fast and he's not letting them so a better thing to do typically would be to group them before you go on an attack and let them catch up because as you can see in the little map here on the little radar they're all in a line. So 
very spread apart. So here we're uh, slowly approaching making NATO. I'll speed it up a little. So that is a pretty cool feature of the game. Aerial attack sirens start sounding on the island. Never a good thing for whoever is on the ground. And uh, you can see we're at 3,500 meters, extremely high. These things are gonna go on a 10,000, that's about 10,000 feet, they're gonna on a 10,000 foot uh, dive. Brave. Let's look around here. All the other flights have still not caught up. And you can see in the distance, we have Tarawa, which is... So here we go. For those of you new to this game, you're about to witness the first dive bomber attack. There we go. And there goes the anti-aircraft fire. Pretty nice. Oh, let's follow one of them. So they're getting shredded, which is why I didn't want to do this in the first place. So, how are the bombing doing? see a lot of planes being uh, shot down. Not a lot of bombing happening. I mean, this has taken some damage. Oh, and there it goes. Oh, there goes the bombs. So as you can see, basically no damage. And yeah, you'll notice if you go back to the Yorktown, we lost a lot of planes there. So instead of doing what the them where is our uh, Louisville? I'm gonna ask the Louisville to go and attack Macanado. Continue attacking this port. Yeah, not that way. So what I'm gonna do is select the CV, recall all flights. And do this the proper way, which is take the um, these two guys, create a new squadron, and tell them to go and attack, making it all at full speed. Let's speed this up. There goes our die bomber coming back. Then I'm going to click on the Yorktown and select all uh, bomber flights. Okay, let's slow this down because it's not working. Okay, let's do this. Why can I not select all the bomber flights? Are they still landing? Yeah, they're still landing probably. Let's check this out. Oh yeah, they're still landing. So let's go back to our Charlie Squadron. Destroyer leader. Hi. No, 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 I don't want to do that. What I want to do... 
that's not what I want to do either. Where is the Louisville? There it is. Let's move. Um, you... No, you, you need to stay back here. In fact... In fact, you, destroyer leader, just go back to uh, the Yorktown. Okay, and I'm gonna take the Louisville and do my thing. Oh my god, are you... Did you not get that? Where... Is he taking damage? Any base has taken damage. Yeah, so are we. Which is... Anyways. That's not... That's how a, you do a bad assault. And one of the bugs in this game is that those sirens still go in the background. So sorry about that guys. But now, right click on Johnston Adel and order Task Force 17 to repair and resupply. Uh, sure, that's what the tutorial wants me to do. Click this button here. And here is where the bugs start in the game because I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure the Louisville is still attacking. So let's look at the Louisville. Or anything. Can I click on anything? War bonds may be spent to construct ships. Yeah, I was gonna get to that. We have 663 war bonds. Yeah. I get that. Can you let me... Videos are available for more in-depth information. Fine. Please let me see what's happening with my Louisville. Allow task to dock. It will replenish supplies with the port. Start repair damaged ships. Yeah. More 50 war bonds. Begin conducting new warship. Okay, so it doesn't want me to... So let's go back and construct to the bridge. Construct new ships in San Diego. So these are your three mainland ports. They never run out of supplies and they're kind of symbolic there. So let's click on San Diego. And then let's click on the shipyard. Okay. Uh, yeah, if you click on it, you get to see what it is all about. Click the build button to start constructing a ship selected. Okay, so what do we want to construct? Um, at this stage, more carriers. Yorktown class carrier, yes. Build. Upgraded. There goes all our war bonds. And then new ships, blah blah blah. Yeah, they queue up basically if you can build have a queue of six, which is fine. Yeah, I did the upgrade button. Upgraded the AA. Click the hide button to close the shipyard. Yep, thank you. Thanks for the tip. Has been occupied, yep. All of these have been occupied by Japan. Which is why. Oh my god, that is a lot of things occupied. Hold strategic ports, enforce Japanese surrender. That's the overall attack the Japanese position on Tarawa. Okay. Click on all objectives. So this is the objectives tabs. And you want to raid Tarawa. And then you want to capture all these things. And then that should... Tokyo being your last objective. So, Tarawa. Now I would like to know what's happening here with my Task Force 17. So Task Force 17, you press escape and then you get to see what's happening around Task Force 17. I was curious what was, what was happening with my um, Louisville that I couldn't click. 
Yeah. So we got uh, torpedo boats coming this way. Okay, so what we're going to do is before I end this episode, so essentially at this point the tutorial has officially ended and the game starts. Um, so before, so the Enterprise is kind of like steaming away there, not a good thing by itself, but um, you don't want to leave an aircraft carrier by itself. So But it's okay, these guys will probably catch up to it. Let's go to... Why are these guys still... Let's order... To land. Hey, please. Please land. Land. And then Yorktown... Oh, it's got the DD with it. So... Enemy vessel has been spotted on the North Pacific. Yes, I will get to them. Why is the Phelps here? Okay, Phelps. Is the Phelps going back as I told it to? Full speed. There you go. Phelps is going to rejoin. And that's what I wanted. It's beautiful with this game when you things do what you want it to do. So Louisville right here. The Louisville can take care of all of this basically. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask Louisville to kindly head in this direction. I'm gonna go press T, look at the top view map. There's the Phelps going back to the carrier. There's our torpedo boats we're not very concerned about. So essentially we think we don't need to do more damage to um, Concord is. So you know what? I'm not gonna do it. Because we did the raid. So I'm gonna say Louisville, go back, rejoin the squadron, and let's see. Oh my god. Let's oh. <laughs> start shooting. Can you rejoin the squadron, please? Plus, plus. Will you rejoin the squadron? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, you can destroy those things. If you guys want to know how a torpedo bullets look like, well, before they die, that's how they look like. Anyways, go back to Louisville. Are you going back? Perfect. Now we can press escape and everybody's happy. Go to bridge view. Task Force 17 is going. If you click here, uh, orders is to go resupply at Johnston, which is perfect. Uh, yeah, look at those these die bombers out of fuel. Yeah. And here, okay. Oh yeah, we so we have enemy vessels here. What do we got? Two destroyers near Midway. What does Midway have? Catalina, 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 Catalina. Dauntless, Dauntless. Okay, so we got two die bombers wings. I don't think they're enough. To go and, um, Why is this plus? Okay, let's go back to a plus one here. Is there any. What's this task force? Lexington. You're just gonna chill there, Lexington? No, you're not gonna chill there. You're just gonna, you're gonna go defend Midway. In fact, you're gonna intercept these guys. Um, and you're doing 28 knots as a squadron, so that's good. We've got. Uh, three destroyers and a cruiser here. And what do we have over here? Task Force 8. You've got huge task force with CVs, CAs. This is a main task force. 
Task Force 8, um, you can start heading towards the front lines. Or let's head, let's head you right here in the middle, where you can do some good. Pearl Harbor Defense Force, yep. And you got the original battleships that didn't get sunk. So you guys need to go back here and repair because they're highly badly damaged. And Pearl Harbor, you can probably start constructing something. Um, so the main thing I want to construct right now is cruisers and carriers. Northampton, 180, Pensacola. So AA strength, this is like the fleet AA. These are not good for fleet AA, they just have local AA. Whereas the Omaha class does, but it's a bit of a waste right now. Atlanta class has good local AA, but doesn't have any uh, long range AA. Hmm. Yep, build one of these. Northampton Heavy Cruiser. Why not? These are good. Good, good one to build. Upgrade. Oh, maybe when you upgrade it, it has more AA. Perfect. So now we're worth 114 bonds. And uh, yeah, let's keep on. So these are spotters. Now. Now that we've got all of this going on, I want to see what's happening over here. Let's accelerate time a little bit to 100 times. 25, 8, 1. Now, gonna click on these guys, press escape, which will take us to the tactical view. Alright, so we got the Devastators and these two, oh my god, they're ASWs, yeah. Alright, so we got this flight of two, but, okay, never mind. That's one flight, and then there's the other flight, so these are dudes, two guys, and we got a Devastators, okay. So let's let's click you and you don't need to be this high. Let's get you to say two thousand. Let's get you to attack this guy and then the other dive bomber group to attack the guy behind. Wait. Did I just... Okay, so this guy is attacking... This destroyer. Alright. Let's see how this is gonna go. Are you gonna die? Yep, here goes the dive. Sounds... Sound could be a little better. So that's the first flight here, let's keep an eye on that. There are the bombs. Hmm, are you dead? Looks pretty dead to me. And here is our second Light. Let's go and attack here. Let's get you to about 1600 meters. Speed up time a little bit. I don't know why he's going that way. Told it to attack. Okay. Oh, it's oh, it's just like losing altitude. Okay, I get it. Will you attack now? Attack. Oh. Nope. 
Okay, how about I, I manually tell it to go near it? This green, oh my god, can you please attack? This little green button means that it's got a payload. Why will you not attack? I don't get it. Just want, refuses to attack. destroyer maybe it just doesn't have the bombs I don't know maybe I can't tell so we're gonna tell it to land and what are these guys what are they doing they're going back let's go to M so that's this guy going back midway ASW bombers Torpedo bombers. Okay. Now. Shame, really, that we have a bomber and we can't. See, these guys don't have a lot of range. But this guy's in the air, too. Torpedo bomber. Oh, he is in range. Perfect. So, let's look. Let's go look at the torpedo bombers. Not the best thing to be to be hitting um, destroyers with, but we'll do what we can. Actually, no. We're just gonna go towards it. We're gonna speed up time. No, what? Oh my god. Okay. Why are you? Why are you going so high? Why? Okay, back to thirty meters. There's another little bug. Okay, never mind, I fixed that. Sometimes it would just crash into the water. Alright, here comes torpedo bombers. I don't know what the damn Catalinas are doing. How about you just land? No, no, no. Not land there. Like land. Yeah, land. Anyways. What is going on with this guy? Okay. <laughs> Just because we didn't pay attention, they decided to... Oh my god. Alright, here's the Euroshio. Or whatever it's called. Ushio. I don't know what these Catalinas are doing. Oh, bombers, good. What the hell happened? Oh my god. <laughs> Did the Catalinas kill? The destroyer? I mean, that's where the other one sank. Okay, back to map. <laughs> Mystery disappearing ships. So, midway. Can you recall all flights? Or do I have to do this manually? Catalina. Land. Dauntless. Land. Devastator. Land. Catalina. I don't know what the hell the Catalina is doing. Land. And the Kingfisher. 
Yeah, you're just scouting. You're just scouting in the wrong direction. Well, whatever. And that's it, guys. Uh, you started seeing the little bit of UI issues and bugs there. But I think I'm going to end it right there. Um, we got our tur sub just doing behind the enemy line things there. Task Force 17 is going to Johnson Island to re supply. And uh, Task Force 3 is just going to join up with a carrier group. Um, Task Force 12 is speeding towards Midway at a very rapid rate to there's nothing defending midway and uh, the Pearl Harbor battleships are repairing building a new carrier what is this where are you going fire destroyers oh my god yeah I forgot about that what is this destroyer there's a lot of task forces I didn't know okay so we got two carrier fleets one going there one going in the middle, so that he can assist either Johnston or Midway or Hawaii as needed. So, thanks very much for watching, guys. As I said, this is my first video on this channel, brand new channel. I'm going to be focusing on naval combat games, primarily uh, right now on. Victory at Sea Pacific because uh, it's a great game, one of my favorite types of games, and I really want to. Has got great potential. I want to support it as much as I can, and I'll probably do some World of Warships contents. I got over 6,000 games in that, or battles played, so I can share some. They're changing the carrier gameplay in that game, so which is why I kind of kind of was looking elsewhere. But I'll show you the carrier gameplay there, and the battleship or whatever gameplay and. Uh, for those who don't know it uh, and then maybe some navy field as well but right now we're just gonna do this playthrough and try to get this game uh, familiar with people and see so if, uh, if you have any suggestions or any comments about the gameplay or the game or my street or my video let me know in the comments below and uh, I will read all of them and uh, try to implement them in the next upcoming videos <coughs> and um, yeah please uh, subscribe tell your friends and uh, like the video if you like what you saw thanks and uh, see you next time